We are Atelier Kemper Till. Um, me, I'm Andre. And I'm Oliver Till. We try to make a very uh, simple architecture, which at the same time is a very complex architecture. We try to make uh, a neutral and um, kind of modest architecture, which at the same time uh, has a very, very specific attitude, which does not destroy or violate uh, the neutral basis of this architecture. Yeah, we think, let's say, the main reason why uh, uh, our profession exists is because of the fact that uh, someone gives us a job to produce a certain space uh, that can be used in different ways. If you take your job serious, you try to create uh, conditions that enables the client to use the buildings in a lot of ways. Huh? also over time. And then it's a bit the question, what is the relation between the uh, expression of the thing you make and, let's say, the program, the relationship between the, the uh, program and the uh, building as such should not be too specific. And in that way, I think the neutrality is a very interesting thing because neutrality can uh, enable the program to be housed in a certain thing, but also neutrality can also invite other programs to occupy the structure. Uh, nowadays architecture is uh, very often uh, violating uh, the aspect of neutrality uh, to uh, emphasize form, to emphasize shape, to emphasize certain uh, media uh, appearance, uh, media uh, uh, fitness, you could say, maybe, and um, we think that uh, this, in the end, um, yeah, is not in the, in, the, in, the, in the sense of the users, is not in the sense of the long-term ter use of a building, the long life uh, uh, of a building, and um, yeah, we just want to uh, kind of uh, keep this form aspect a little bit lower and uh, yeah, try not to exaggerate in that way. Actually, we work as a traditional architect does, namely that we just check out, okay, there's this and this money, this is the budget for the project, and then we just analyze carefully what can you do with this budget. With the, the, the economic basis, uh, the budget is defining somehow the strategy of the project. And that has a lot to do how you set up the building. Do you make it more or less compact? Do you give it more or less facade? Uh, how many uh, elevators do you put in a, in a building, how many uh, staircases, etc., etc. So we try to fine-tune all these things very carefully from the beginning on, and that makes us able to, uh, yeah, in the end, uh, come to a building which is maybe, maybe refined up to the point in a sector of building where nobody would believe that it's possible, like social housing, for instance. Well, I'd say we think it's also a great honor for an architect to work on, on housing projects just because of the thing it is really related to normal people. And we think that, yeah, it's a, a quite interesting thing just to design something for normal people on the street and not just for very rich, special clients. Because when you look back on the history of West European cities, then you see always that architects were also involved in the development of the yeah, more grey and neutral structures within the city. No? They didn't just build the castles and the churches. I mean. <laughs> we are also engaged in the, in the European tender system. Uh, I mean, uh, Europe as a unifying uh, bunch of countries tries to define yeah, unified rules, which comes now over all the European countries, how the European tender rules uh, are treated in the Netherlands or tended, uh, are treated in the wrong way, so that they produce the opposite, that they just exclude a lot of uh, creative potential in the country. And they actually produce the opposite of what they are meant for, namely to open the market, so they close the market at the moment, so they close off all younger or smaller offices and... Yeah, that's one very concrete example how you can engage uh, as an architect uh, uh, being busy uh, for your own group uh, of, of, of profession but at the same time being politically and socially very relevant because you kind of uh, take care on the, on the spatial production of, of the city, on the spatial production of public buildings, etc. On one hand you have to be uh, talented and interested and uh you should be conscious about what is going on in the world <laughs> and you should try to be a sort of good uh, uh, designer or something, eh? what you can say. But on the other hand, you also see that uh, this is not enough. You are very much uh, depending on the context you are working in. And I think, uh, yeah, I mean, you should not just focus on the quality of your work, but you should also try to yeah, influence in a positive way 
uh, your context. So it's a complex phenomenon uh, where a cultural position has to be defended and the only person who can def defeat it is, is the architect themselves. The group of architects has to take the responsibility to, let's say, see their own uh, work, their own position as a cultural one, and that means being active. Uh, we personally believe that uh, nowadays, uh, after having a flowering up of a lot of tendencies that architecture is defined in widespread ways, concentrated on the core activities and relating the core activity uh, towards a lot of aspects in the society, but always coming back to the core activity is maybe the most uh, engaged way of working in the field of architecture. Because what we also see is that a lot of these activities are just used to kind of uh, uh, escape from the rough reality of building. That's actually where we define our working field where we see the most relevance to become active, also to be, become politically active, to really uh, yeah, give something to society.